Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. Hi guys, hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. All I ask is that after listening to and or watching the video, if you find you enjoyed it or learned something, smash that like button and consider subscribing. Now let's dig in. Sebastian Rogers, biological dad, said Sebastian would never go outside without shoes because once when he was a child, he stepped on what he thought was a mud pile, and it turned out to be a hill of fire ants. Sebastian's mother, Katie Proudfoot, said that Sebastian was terrified, or is terrified, of insects. The mother also said Sebastian doesn't like to get dirty. She said that all of Sebastian's shoes were accounted for on the day that he disappeared, so he had to be barefoot. There's no way that this child would go outside without his shoes per his biological mother and his biological father. In my opinion, all of this screams that Sebastian did not go outside, at least of his own accord. At 3.10 a.m., a ring camera on a neighbor's house that faces the back of Sebastian's house captured what looks to be two people walking around with flashlights. When Katie Proudfoot was talking to her husband, Chris, around midnight on the day Sebastian vanished, had she called him to have him return home from Memphis to help her with something that might have happened to Sebastian, something really bad. According to Google Maps, it takes about 3 hours and 26 minutes to drive from Memphis, Tennessee, where Chris was said to be working construction, to Hendersonville, Tennessee, where Sebastian lived. If something bad had happened, would Chris speed his way home, trying to get there as quickly as possible? Could he have arrived there around 3.10 a.m. or a little before? It's been said that those lights from a ring camera don't have anything to do with the case. But come on, those lights are the only suspicious events that we know of that occurred on the day and in the early morning hours when Sebastian disappeared. To me, they most likely are connected. They have to be involved. You see two lights at an hour when nearly everyone else is asleep and a 15-year-old boy disappears sometime that early morning before 6 a.m., the lights can't be a coincidence. Or unrelated, JLR of JLR Investigates is boots on the ground in Hendersonville. How is JLR able to go to all these different places? Where the heck does he live? And how is he always everywhere? He's been talking to locals, and he said he verified that garbage from Sebastian's neighborhood goes to a landfill in Tennessee. So why were the authorities searching at a landfill in Kentucky? Well, per JLR, one neighborhood over, a neighborhood that is apparently under construction, well, the garbage from that neighborhood goes to the landfill in Kentucky. So could it be that those two figures with the lights captured at 3.10 a.m. on Monday, February 26, were scurrying around, possibly trying to dispose of a body. And is that why law enforcement was searching that landfill in Kentucky? Inquiring minds want to know. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories. You see two light sources, which we've circled to help you follow. For point of reference, the security camera was pointed toward the back of Sebastian's home in a common area. In the video, you see subject one with a light source in the lower right-hand corner. Then you see subject two briefly appear and move toward the first before that light source is covered or obscured by bushes. Subject one, a few seconds later, then moves out of frame. Then subject two reappears and follows subject one off screen. It's a short time later and it's very vague, but then you see one of the subjects moving quickly back through the common area and that is it.